Hello everyone, I'm Haley from Trapology Boston, an escape room and immersive entertainment company based in downtown Boston. Today I am joined by Deborah and Andressa from Group.br. How are you two doing today? Wonderful. Thank All you great. for having us. Yeah, thanks well, thank for inviting you for us. talking to me today. This is very exciting um, to learn about your company, uh, you know, seeing how you brought Brazil to New York uh, through theater arts I think is so cool. Uh, so just to get started, can you tell me a little bit about yourselves? Maybe something Google wouldn't tell us. <laughs> um, well, something Google doesn't know is that I was a showgirl in Brazil, in uh, Japan. <laughs> really? Yes. So now I do the reverse. You know, I'm Deborah Ballardini and I'm the executive director of Group.br uh, and also one of the co-founders. Um, so I'm Andressa Furletti, I'm artistic director and co-founder of Group.br. I'm also a multidisciplinary artist. That's something that you can find on Google. Something you cannot find on Google is that I've made a GMO plant in my life. I have a background in, in genetics. I have a degree in biology. Um, so I did, it, it was actually a tobacco plant that you do as a model for corn. So the idea is that the corn would have more of the essential uh, amino acids that you know usually doesn't have. It's very poor in nutrition. So that was part of my graduation project. <laughs> very diverse backgrounds. I love this. <laughs> uh, so now that we know a little bit about you, can you tell us about group.br? I'll let Andressa talk about that because otherwise I'll tell you in details what's going on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so um, me and Deborah already had this desire of uh, bringing Brazilian theater and Brazilian arts to New York before we met each other. And then we met through a friend in Camo who shared the same desire. And I immediately fell in love with her. I was like, I wanna work with this woman. <laughs> Um, and that was in 2011 uh, and so we started with the reading of a play and then the next year we decided to put like a full-on production and then we decided to make things legal and formal so we opened like an official company and stuff so the company has been growing and developing um, a lot it's almost nine years now in 2020 um, Yes, and um, our, our main focus is our theater productions, uh, but we also have a lot of other initiatives and other events. A lot of them serve as a community building and also fundraising for the company. Uh, so we have uh, Pão de Queijo Brunch. Pão de Queijo is a, it's a Brazilian cheese bread, which is delicious. If you haven't tried it, try it, it's really good. Um, so we have this event, which is a, a brunch for about like 50 people. At the end, everyone is like friends, you know, hanging out. There's a lot of networking involved, new couples arrive. <laughs> you know? um, it's super cool. We also have readings of plays and uh, workshops. Uh, for actors, workshops for non-actors, dance workshops, um, and we also have this big party called Sarava, which is a, a Brazilian dance party we have been doing at the House of Yes since 2018, uh, for almost like 600 people. Um, and what's interesting about our events, we always link them to a show we're doing. So we take the theme of that show and the theme of the party, we blend them together and then uh, we create the show, always with the, with the idea of presenting Brazilian culture, uh, especially things that are not the mainstream things uh, people know about Brazil. Because you talk, oh, what do you know about Brazil? This is actually now a teaser. You know, they know about carnival, they know about caipirinha, they know about samba and they know about soccer, but they don't know much about art, especially theater. So even when we do a carnival party, we try to bring elements of carnival people don't know because they think about the carnival in Rio with the big cars and, you know, and the feathers and the, the glitter and all that stuff, but it goes way beyond. And 
Laulsa is here to say that. This is a character from Carnaval from Recife, which is a city in the northeast of Brazil. Um, so it's this kind of things that we do. And um, our last two shows were immersive. Um, not because we decided to do immersive theater one day, it's just because um, they were devised shows and it felt right to do that because of the material we were working on. So the first one was called Infinite While It Lasts and was based on the life and works of a Brazilian poet and writer called Vinicius de Moraes, which people don't know when we say his name, but he's people actually know him because he's the composer of Go From Ipanema and all the great Bossa Nova songs people hear in restaurants, elevators, bars, shows, concert halls all over the world. Um, and uh, he was very bohemic um, and he wrote a lot in the bars and he met a lot of partners in the bars and wives he was married nine times so it was basically a show about love because all his poetry was basically about love uh, so we decided to uh, create the show for a bar where people would come in and you know they would find already the actors they all embodied Vinicius um, or someone from Vinicius um, relationships um, so it was everybody already in the bar, you know, it was a band playing Bossa Nova and stuff. And then the, the play would start developing this, uh, this love stories would happen as people were having caipirinhas and uh, Brazilian appetizers and all that stuff. And then we decided to do a show on Clarice Lispector, which is a Brazilian writer um, that is like probably, they say she's one of the uh, biggest writers in Brazil. Like sometimes I say she is the biggest, maybe, but maybe I'm putting on our side a little bit. Um, but she, yeah, it's like she's a very important uh, writer. In her time of type of writing, it's a lot of stream of consciousness and a lot of um, intimate feelings. Um, and we couldn't see this kind of text sit, said in a theater with actors on stage and the audience quiet in the, in, 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 the, in the dark, you know, from afar. We thought that it had to be intimate and it had to be in a house because she wrote in a house a lot. She stayed at home a lot, um, especially like she wrote at home with her two sons and, you know, um, so we, we wanted to bring her universe in that way. So we end up going to this immersive direction. I don't know what the next is going to be, you know, because <laughs> doing immersive theater is very re rewarding, you know, it moves people a lot. The experience is very visceral, but it's very hard to produce. You know, it makes things way more complicated if you want to travel with the show and people say, can, can you get me the writer? I was like, I need to see your space. Otherwise, I don't know where, I, like, how many lights I need, you know? <laughs> how many rooms you have in your house and like, things like that. Mm -hmm. uh, but yes, it's very, very rewarding. Did I forget anything, Deborah? No, you're wonderful. Every time you were saying something, I was like, oh, but there is that. And I was like, no, don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I wanted to compliment one thing, like just uh, um, talking about like how we never intended to be immersive. Like we just, um, when we work in our shows, we, we really look at the material and see what the material is asking for. Um, and, you know, in this case, definitely um, Clarice Lispector and Inside the Wild Heart is, it has to be immersive for the intimate intimacy that Andressa was talking about. But it's so funny that in general, now that something just clicked in my mind, you know, what is the direction of the next thing we're going to do or, or what is the direction of theater per se, you know, traditional theater is always going to be there and I love it. I'm trained as a traditional theater uh, person, but there is something about the intimacy, especially in this technological days, you know, um, we live, you know, in our computers, you know, and we are always, we always think that we are connected. 
until you get into an immersive room or escape room for that matter, since we are here. Um, you get in and you're, you're with the person. The person is actually talking to you, you know, uh, and you're witnessing in, the, in a much closer uh, way. You're part of it. Um, and one of the, the, the differences for me, you know, between uh, what we do in terms of immersive, there's so many different types of immersive theater, of course, out there. But what is different uh, for us and what we do, in, especially inside the wild heart, is that the audience always has a choice. So it is intimate, but it's not invasive. Or it's also not manipulative, but it's also not like detached. You know, uh, I'm here, you're doing your thing, let me do my thing, and you just sit there and witness. Uh, but there's also not like, okay, enough, you can't be in this room anymore, let me take you someplace else. <laughs> yeah. You know, we, uh, and that happened organically, like very, um, very natural. It was not something we thought about, but because we were exposed to a lot of immersive theater, went to see a lot of plays, we were like, hmm, what makes a difference, you know? Uh, what makes a difference for us? But anyway, I think that um, more and more people are looking for that connection, for that intimacy. So I don't know what's gonna happen next, but what the next text is going to call for, but um, I feel like um, it is a tendency. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, just looking through your past works, you have really expanded what you're doing so much and involved in such a cool way. Um, I know you were saying that getting into immersive theater was very natural, not necessarily something you thought about from the get go. But can you feel any difference in how you, you know, like maybe view theater now or approach it because you've had that experience with immersive now? I think I pretty much said it, <laughs> you know, and what I just said, like, if, if I've, I've been having a lot of questions about what I want to do also as a performer, because Andres and I perform in, 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 in every show we do. Mm -hmm. um, when I'm actually, when I'm directing a show with a company, I refuse to perform because I am, I am a one trick pony. You know, I can only. That only happened once. once. <laughs> well, but you know, it's the just first like you were in the cast, and the second round of Infinite Wild Last, you were in the cast. So. I know, but it's like it was like almost like a cameo, or something like that, because it, it's really hard for me. Um, I, I like to, you know, um, immerse myself into what I'm doing that moment. But anyway, so uh, this whole thing made me. It's it's making me think about what is the progression of theater nowadays you know and my role as a performer and my role as an audience as well like when i sit down what do i want to see you know do i want to sit down sometimes i want just to sit down and don't put me in any situation i just want to be here and just give it to me you know more of like an entertainment um uh, you know, a passive entertainment than just a, something active. Right. But I do think, uh, I'm going to stress this, I do think there's room for both. Mm -hmm. um, it's not one better than the other. It's just different. And I think that, um, I don't know what's going to happen now that we are, you know, we have our latest thing now is our happy hour online, which is um, our readings about Clarice Lispector, about her work and talks about her her life and everything and it's been very interesting because we've been trying to like raise the stakes mm -hmm. uh, of of you know being not being just this i'm gonna read here now and we ask the actors to be creative but meanwhile we just have this you know this this yeah. the camera here and to me it's like it's crazy it's like how am i gonna move on uh, from this so that's another we need to reinvent ourselves because we don't know how long it's going to take. Um, but I think that there is room for all. And right. we need to take advantage of uh, reinventing ourselves in what we are doing now and just keep innovating, innovating, innov or recycling for that matter. Mm -hmm. you know? So it sounds like the way you view theater has really progressed naturally with creating it as well. Yes. Yeah. Do you feel like that's the same for you, Andressa? Um, I think 
it changes in a way that you start to research more. Uh, I think I was exposed to immersive theater way early in my career, way before I moved here to to US. Um, I would say that that is probably going to tell my age, but it's been maybe like 20 years when I saw my first immersive um, play in, in, in Rio. And actually before that, when I started to, to uh, study theater as a teenager, that then I had to stop with like family reasons and stuff. Um, I saw this play that um, you enter a room and you had a cell in the, in the middle of the room and then you sat around the cell and it was a prisoner doing a monologue. I don't remember the monologue. I was probably way too young for that experience, but the, the format was, it, it's still in my mind. I still remember it. You know, I remember that man in a cell, like staring at me, you know, very close and the, those bars separating us. Um, so I think it, immersive is it's something that has always been in the back of my mind. Every time I go and see it, I, I love it. Um, so I think as we got into this world, for me, it changes in a way that it's, I start to seek more <laughs> for it as, a, as not just as an audience, but as an artist and researcher. Um, last year I went to the, oh my God, what is the name of the summit? Um, I don't want to say wrong. Um, Immersive Design Summit, I think. Guys, if I said it wrong, I'm so sorry. <laughs> I can send you the link so you can <laughs> get the right information. Um, so they were talking about a lot of things, escape rooms and, you know, immersive theater. And they were talking about artificial intelligence for, like, creating actors that you would put, like, a camera that would scan your room and then um, through AR you would see the actors and that they were, like, computer-generated. And they were able to like sit on the right chair that was in the room. It was like how like theater was progressing. And, and at that time I was like, this is crazy. Who's going to do this? And I was like, I wish I had started to do that back then. So maybe today we would have something that people could do theater in their living rooms because this is the reality we have right now. So I think, yeah, in, in terms of research, it has been opening ideas and mm -hmm. things. And also a lot of things, right, Andressa, are so in our face in, uh, in like um, the series, like in Net on Netflix and, you know, like I was watching, um, what was the name of it? Um, um, altered, uh, altered Carbon. Mm -hmm. Oh my God, that thing is scary. <laughs> it's so scary, but it's totally possible. You know, and then you, and then you look at it and you're like, well, we are in it already. We just haven't, you know, been exposed to it because, you know, prize, technolo technological prize or whatever, whatever the reason is, but it's really in our faces, you know. And, and my husband always asked me, like, so you're an actress. What are you going to do with a robot that substitutes you next time? <laughs> I go like, <laughs> Andres, I can imagine my husband saying that. So I'm like, I don't know, but he's going to have to figure it out what he's going to do with me when I'm in there acting, you know, because I'm not going to give up. <laughs> I think the robot is going to have to leave. <laughs> you know, and, but it, because it's, it's what we love to do. Like, there's nothing like the human. And, and I totally understand that we might get to like a, a technology where the robot's going to be like so frighteningly human. <laughs> And close to what we are, you know, what, what we, uh, you know, is going to be able to portray us. But at the same time, um, there's nothing like, you know, what we have here, even on camera, you know. Mm -hmm. So, you know, with technology, you know, obviously you've seen that with, um, you know, your past shows, seeing, you know, like the home theater type thing. Um, but then talking about that human connection that you have when you do your immersive uh, performances, do you see yourself staying with the like completely human immersive face to face or do you think you'll ever explore some of the, you know, more technological components that can be um, combined with theater? I, th I think, I think, I think <laughs> I'm going to, I'm going to let Andressa 
uh, developed this one, but my super straightforward opinion is that we need to blend things because we need, we need to adapt. Mm -hmm. We need to adapt and we need to research. And that's something that we always do. And to me it has a lot to do with evolution, you know, with Darwinism you know, because it's not, it's not the, the, the strongest or the most intelligent, um, the most intelligent that survives in any kind of environment, but the one that is able to adapt. That's what I believe. And I think that in every area and as human beings, we need to adapt. We need to, you know, I, I cannot tell my son, don't play in the VR today. You know, <laughs> I have to say, okay, half an hour but then you're gonna read <laughs> you know there's a there is a balance and there's an adaptation but andressa is our technological woman <laughs> and yeah. i am so blessed to have this woman with me because i am totally a traditionalist <laughs> yeah i'm totally a more techie person i like i like blending things um we do have ideas for VR and stuff. I think like the, the human elements, I don't know, it's going to be always uh, present. It's really hard to project what's going to happen in 10 years. It's hard to predict what's going to happen next week right now, <laughs> you know? <laughs> but um, I like human interaction, even though they're behind the camera, even though like here through Zoom, we have like, have this technology to help us get closer. So this is more like what we believe. So I do see us using technology um, in our shows, but not necessarily. We might do a show that has nothing. It has candles and it's in the park, you know, who knows? I like that idea. <laughs> I like that idea a lot. <laughs> Especially the, our first show was called The Serpent. Mm -hmm. And um, I had directed like other, you know, solo shows and stuff like that. But one of the one of the guys that was in there then left um, because we were too crazy. <laughs> um, he got, literally, he he stood up and he said, "Okay, guys, I don't think we're thinking the same thing. I love you, but I'm gonna have to go." <laughs> but anyway, so. The first thing that I said, like when, when, when this guy said, no, you need to direct this play. And I said, well, if I'm directing, we're not going to have any set. I don't want a couch. I don't want the table. I don't want, I don't want distraction. Mm -hmm. And then we started going crazy about a window. And we did such research about that window. <laughs> and that was the only thing that was in there. It was the window and like a rehearsal cube. And that's all we had. Mm -hmm. So like Andressa just said, you might, you might be that mm -hmm. again or, you know. So when it comes to creating shows, can you uh, maybe take me through the process from, you know, where you look for the initial idea versus the timeline for research and actually training the performers? Uh, can you kind of go through that process for me? So, um, <laughs> go ahead, go ahead. It's funny because our first two shows had to do with a centennial. Mm -hmm. Are you guys, can, can you hear me well? Because there's a construction here. Uh, I can hear you, but it's, it's just noisy in the background. Um, so the first one was uh, uh, about this Brazilian writer, um, author called uh, Nelson Rodriguez, which is our, probably like our main guy in theater. Everybody knows, everybody, you know, like you have to do it in your life and like things like that. Um, and it was his centennial and we saw a kind of a grant in Brazil, like the way it works there is a bit different, but that's, that's say grant, so we understand. Um, and I kind of like got excited about it and I brought to Deborah and uh, our partners at the time, Tiago and Carlos, I was like, hey, so there's this grant, maybe we can try and then we do the play here and then take it to Brazil. And then the whole thing with the grant didn't, didn't uh, work out. Um, at the end, we didn't even apply because it wasn't a lot of money. So the producers were like, well, this is so little money for you guys to do the play there and then bring it to Brazil. Like no one wanted to do it. But then we already fell in love with the idea. We already had the idea of the, of the, the window, you know, because like when you have, when you submit a project, you have to have some ideas, right? 
Um, so that one was like this. And then the other one was um, about Vinicius de Moraes. I was one day hearing a CD on Spotify with, with this guy reading his own poetry and it was raining outside and like, and the idea struck me. And it, it was funny because before telling Deborah about this, I had a lunch with a friend of ours. He, he saw the serpent and he wanted to sponsor, find like a sponsor for the show. And he was like pressing me, what's next? What's next? What's next? And I didn't want to say it because it was like an idea that I had by myself. And I was like, well, I'll tell you this idea that I have, but I didn't tell my partners yet. I don't know. This is just something. And he was like, this is wonderful. I'm, I'm going to put money on it. You know, it's, it's, how much was it? Like, Deborah, like, it was $500,000. $500, it was yes. like half a million dollars. Yes. So I came to the company all like shiny, excited. It's like, guys, I have this idea and I have someone who's gonna sponsor it and he's, <laughs> he's gonna give us money to, to develop the play and blah, blah, blah. So I came with this concept of the bar and everything. But then, then it's like, it's part of our process that was kind of similar for this show and then for Inside the Wild Heart, the one based on Clarice, which is like, we start digging into that person and the and the work. So we're starting with his biography, and then we're starting reading. Like, I don't think we we read all his poetry. No, it was impossible because was, yeah. his, his body of work is much bigger than than Clarice. Yeah, yeah. It's, not, like, it's not impossible, but you know, like we 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 studied a lot. We read a lot. You know, like we read the play he wrote. That is actually. It's supposed to debut on Broadway sometimes, uh, the Black Orpheus. Um, so we, we started to create this show. Um, and from the beginning, the theme of the show was very, um, was very obvious. It was love, you know, all like he's falling in love, out of love. You know, he was all, either suffering because he wanted that person or he was suffering because he didn't want that person anymore. So it was like this cycles. So we did a show about the cycles of love, you know? Uh, so we did this nine cycles and we told all the nine love stories through his music and his poetry. Um, so that show was more, um, so we, we took a lot, a lot of his poetries and, you know, the characters involved and everything. And then we brought the actors in um, and then we improvised a lot and then we filmed a lot of improvisation. So we would create some exercises to stimulate people to bring in ideas or the ideas that would come in the rehearsal room. We filmed it and then me, Deborah, and Tiago, we sat down, we watched it like hours and then we separated. Oh, this could be when Vinicius meet Tachi because this has to do with directions that she was giving him. So they were gonna put this text. So it, it was a lot based on what the actors brought in combination with the, with the work itself. Then Inside the Wild Heart was a, a bit different. First, because it was way more complicated material because Clarice doesn't have one theme. She has some re themes that she can come, keeps bringing back all the time. Uh, she talks a lot about faith. She talks a lot about uh, personal freedom. She talks a lot about violence, maternity, uh, childhood, solitude. She talks a lot about music. She uh, uh, cites like music and musicians, composers all the time. Um, uh, madness, you know, like it was like very diverse. So what we decided to do, um, we decided to get each theme to one actor and then that actor would represent that the development of that theme throughout her body of work so it's not like totally like straight thing but we tried like okay in this moment of the show um represents kind of like her first book so the, the kind of main uh scenes were from that book, but all the other um, actors were either um, 
representing one character from that book that had to do with their theme or from a short story or something. So we created actually 11 plays within one. So it was like a crazy process that we had to learn how to do it. Like I, we couldn't find any literature on how to create things like that. So we were working with a lot of little pieces of paper. You know, but, but, but to understand but, the, the structure, how the structure was going to be until we, we, we came out with this like columns that represented like the timeline like this, you know, so the theme, music, this, 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 this. But Andressa, um, <laughs> we have to we have to take a step back and back and explain that it took us about two years to get where Andressa is saying. Yeah. Because um, we right after we finished Vinicius, for example, like Andressa came in with Vinicius with Infinite Wildly Last already. You know, I have this idea. Her concept was so clear about the, you know, uh, about the nine relationships. It was so clear. She knew what, you know, what we could be doing. So when you get the actors inside the room, then you have, you were able to have this long process. But, and also we discovered along this eight and a half years that we, we have a long process because we want to grasp a lot. You know, we like our process is like, let's just really see what this, what this author is about, what this whole show is about. But what I find it interesting is that for Inside the Wild Heart, we, after we finished Vinicius, we finished Infinite, we were like, oh my God, we talked about love. And we talked about Vinicius de Moraes, which is, you know, girl from Ipanema guy. Mm -hmm what are we going to talk about now? So we started like going crazy trying to read this, read that, and that. And Clarice Lispector was, you know, amongst the, the, the writers that we were reading. So we started reading that. But I, I would say that our process always starts with me and Andressa. Now with me and Andressa. At that time, we used to have um, another co-founder, Tiago, that used to work with us. Um, so we started with, with this, you know, two people here first, mm -hmm. and then the, the, the concept is already, um, uh, already sort of like decided. We don't know how it's going to come to fruition, but it's already decided. So we know it's in the house. We know we needs to be intimate. We know we want to use uh, this both. And then like Andres is saying, like we had, Oh my God, if I, I have those pictures of like the residencies we did, the two of us together, like the floor was full with, with little pieces of paper, mm -hmm. you know? How are we going to put this together? And this took about two years for the first production in 2016, right, Andressa? Wow. It was actually a year that we got into, into that. And then 2016, we had the first production. Then the second production, we changed directors. Mm -hmm. um, we got Linda Wise that came uh, from France to direct us and that has a lot to do with um, the type of collaboration also that is part of the process. I think that that's very important also to say um, along those years we've been discovering what type of collaboration we like to have. So it, it was from, uh, to me you correct me if I'm wrong, Andressa, or if you have a different view, but like to me from the beginning, you know, from the beginning of the company, there was always um, the first concept and then whoever is coming little by little, you know, now we call the actors, now we call mm -hmm. the director, now we call the, this and that. They, they are always open to create and we always do the recycling. Mm -hmm. So actually not just open to create, like we get very annoyed with people that sit down and wait for us to tell them what to do. Yes. So we oh my God, that's to see the artists and propose something. We might, it might work with what we're doing, it might not, but it's all, even when it doesn't, it's all in the back of our minds. It's like, hmm, yep. that person said that he wanted to wear purple. Yeah. Why does he want to wear purple? You know? <laughs> Why purple? Does it work? 
-hmm. And even in the, the purple, the, we already decided that it should be blue. Yeah. There's always that possibility of the purple. Yes. You know, like we, we, we try not to forget what, what comes. And yeah. it, that has happened a lot of times that we have one idea. It was like, ah, uh, no, but actually, mm, nah, doesn't work. And then like we keep exploring, exploring, exploring. That idea comes back and it's like, Oh, now it works like if we do it like this, yeah. and then we flip it, and so it keeps adding, you know. Yeah. But at the end, it has so many hands. So yeah. just like coming, coming back. Of I don't know if you guys can you see this. Uh -huh. Yeah. So there was like some of the little papers that we had because oh. it was like <laughs> it, wouldn't, it wouldn't fit in a computer screen, so we had this right. like long. Uh, pieces of paper with like tiny strips and it will, we were yeah. like literally oh no, no so let's put this here oh no, no but it's better if this scene comes here because then this person goes like this way it was like really a puzzle and, and then the, after the, a point um we brought the actors in the process and then changes again and then you know like Oh, but, but this, they, they don't like the text or it's not working or maybe we should put something else or this idea we had doesn't work at all or the idea they have is much better or no, it works, you know, and, and it's wonderful. And also the, when, we brought, when we brought Linda to the rect, it was really beautiful because she stayed here for like, what, 10 days for her residency. She came in like in May for a residency and in the residency, um, she even like challenged the actors even more. Like she would say, for example, just, just as an example, you know, like, so Andressa and Deborah, you get together and you bring me all your fantasies of what you see your character wearing, uh, like put up a scene for me and, you know, support each other. And then the next, right after we finished that, now she would say, okay, Deborah, how do you see Andressa's text? I want you to, put, you know, like she will put us in the roles of directors also in order to have that exchange of, of ideas. So by the time she came back from, you know, when she left from the residency and then when she came back from Paris, a lot of things were already like really, you know, bubbling. Um, so I think that in a, it, it was a different process in terms of like timing and the, the material, the text is harder, it's a house, uh, the director is in Paris, like, you know, there's a bunch of things like that. But I think all in all, it's always this collaboration of like, we expect yeah. you to create with us, you know? It definitely sounds like a very collaborative and flexible type of process. And you obviously put a lot of work into it and it shows with your final performances. Uh, very, very impressive work. Um, so just kind of getting towards the end of our time, um, just a couple more things. Uh, if you want to maybe share like a dream project you've always wanted to work on, if there were absolutely no barriers in place or any funny stories behind the scenes, you know, any, anything like that that you'd like to share? Oh my God. Funny stories behind the scenes, Andressa. <laughs> we have so many. This show we did in a bar. So this is something you were, as a creative a theater or any art form, sign a contract. <laughs> <laughs> Put everything on a paper and sign it because seriously, you never know. So we learned this a hard way. We had uh, this venue for the play that was supposed to happen in a bar. Um, and it was very hard because we were looking for a venue that we could, uh, that had a liquor license. Mm -hmm. And a liquor license for uh, weeks for the show. So we found this loft that this guy uh, rented to us. And he looks very flexible and very friendly. Oh, I really want to help you guys. Your project is amazing. Na, 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 na. Then we did a fundraising there. Um, at the fundraising, things are already starting to get off. Then 10 days, 10 days before the show, he decided to double the rent of the space. And he decided to put some rules on the sales of food and beverage and people would have to buy, um, we would have to guarantee that people would buy 
two drinks and one, one appetizer per person, but they only had 15 minutes before the show to do so. Oh my God, you remember those details? I do, my friend, I was there. <laughs> So it was like a back and forth for a few days. And then on a Friday night, I was arriving at BAM here in New York to see a show with one of the cast members. And our producer sent a text message. Oh, he won't, he won't back up. He said, if you don't pay um, by, I don't know, by Sunday, that was a Friday, he's canceling the show and not giving the money back. And I was like, Oh okay, we need to find an answer. We don't have the money to pay double the, the, the rent. We either pay everyone that is doing the show or we have to raise the price of the tickets and we like tickets were already on sale and everything. Mm -hmm. So no, so it was me and this cast member. We called another cast member, which has a, 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 a the husband is a musician, knows a lot of bars. So it was a Friday night, the three of us, like literally, we were knocking at the door can we have a play here? <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, I just had a baby. Yes. So I'm on the phone like um, 11 o'clock at night. Did you guys get something? Did you guys get something? <laughs> and then about like 2 a.m., we knock at this amazing place here in New York called Nublu. Mm -hmm. um, that uh, they, they have like a passion for Brazilian music. Uh, one of the owners is Brazilian. I was like, and I used to go there to dance for her. And I was like, no blue, no blue, maybe no blue. And then uh, Fernanda, one of the cast members, she was like, oh, I know, I know people there, let's go there. And then I get the manager is sitting at the, at the door checking people in and I tell her briefly about the show. And she was like, yeah, let's do it here, I love it. And I was like, wait. Tomorrow, I'm gonna send you a contract. I'm gonna explain you everything we're gonna do. No, we don't want to. We don't, do we don't want a contract. contract. Yeah. Oh, fine. We can do it. We love it. I was like, no, you don't understand. I can't do this ever again in my life. Next day, this was a Friday. Next day, I remember, I was like, here. I told my husband, here. Here's the baby. Take care of him. I need two hours. I'm going to go downtown to sign a contract. So I had this thing in my head. I was like, we have to sign this contract. Yeah. So we looked, I, I look at the, um, at the venue, of course. I look at the bar. And I remember us like looking at each other like, oh my God, we don't have a contract. They don't want to sign a contract. It took him like weeks to sign a contract. <laughs> but, yeah. we, but we had a wonderful well, it, it wasn't weeks. Wonderful. It was like days, but it felt like weeks. But it, yeah. it was before opening for sure because you were like, no guys, you don't understand. We need your signature. <laughs> <laughs> so stressful. They, they were super laid back. That's what yeah. it was. You no, know? we, had, we had some crazy stressful Mm -hmm. things you it's know it's not like you got it all to crazy. work out at the end there oh my god yes no it worked I have out. Two. Actually, I it, have worked two. Out, it worked out for the best because it was actually a bar you know like we didn't have perfect. to handle the, the the liquor ourselves you know and the, it the, was the, so perfect that it was, we it was back. Great. The, the place has a smell of beer on the floor so it was yeah. perfect for the show <laughs> It's a full sensory. And we experience. actually, we actually went back next year. Like they invited us to their, they opened a new bar and they invited us to go back and we did the show yeah. again. But I have two things about that real quick about those two places. Uh -huh. On the first place, right, the new blue. I remember my birthday. I remember a cake uh -huh. coming, people singing. The cake went to the basement and I never ate my cake. So. <laughs> Because that's how crazy we were at yeah. that time. I had to finish, like people saying, and I went like this. I was like, okay, great, thank you guys. And it's like, oh, we're gonna go down in the basement to cut the cake, and then we bring it back. I was gone. I had no idea what, what is the taste of it. And I another one. You, I can say your cake was delicious, I remember. <laughs> I know, thank you for trying and for letting me know. But, but the second one was in the second venue, this, the same owner, second bar. I remember Andressa and I, um, and we never, ever, the two of us ever drank anything before going on the stage. Mm -hmm. And we had a basically like empty house. It was like maybe like what, six people? No, no, it was like, I think it was like three people in the house. Oh my God. Like, like the, second, the, second, the second week of the show, and we were like, oh my God, we have three people here. What are we doing wrong? I was in the dressing room like 
all, all the That's actors were out. already on stage and I was like looking, I was like, oh my God, there's three people here. What are we doing with our what lives? We what is going to happen? We can't do this. So then I went and I got, I got a shot of tequila <laughs> and I walked into this dressing room, which was like, you know, this mm. big and I held Andressa's hand and I said, this is going to work out here. <laughs> and Andressa took it. I took it and I said, this is going to work. This company is going to work out. And she looked at me and she said, I promise never to do a show. Like we were never going to have an empty house again. <laughs> and that was like, we were, of course we were not drunk. I mean, I was a little drunk because, you know, I can't drink. I don't drink. But that was a very, very memorable uh, day for us because yeah. we never had an empty house since then. It worked. Look where it you worked. Are. It worked. Yeah. And not the tequila, guys, just so you understand. It's not the tequila. It was the handshake. It was... No, it, it was, was the motivation. Was it was the drive. Yeah. <laughs> Deborah, Deborah remembers what I told her, but I remember what she told me. She grabbed my hand with like... It was very strong. She almost broke my fingers. And she said, uh, this company is going to work. We're not going to let it down. And I think she heard my thoughts because I was doubting ourselves in, yeah. the, in the backstage. You know, I was like, oh my God, maybe we shouldn't have done this. You know, like maybe they, maybe they should do something else. And, and I think she yeah. heard my thoughts and then she came and grabbed my hand and here we are. Yeah, that drive and determination got you to where you are. You've had several successful shows and... I know that I'm certainly excited to see what else you're going to bring in. Mm -hmm. um, we are out of time, but thank you so, so much for talking with me today. It has been so fun and I hope you enjoyed yourselves. Yeah. It was wonderful. Thank you so much, Haley. Of yeah, course. I, lo I look forward to see your productions as well. Yes. You, do you guys uh, bring the, your productions here to New York as well or just in Boston? Uh, we're currently just based in Boston, but you know, you never know where, uh, the future will bring us, so we'll just have to keep in contact and see what we can bring. Wonderful. Yeah. It's not. It, it's not so far away. Maybe you know. Not we'll take a weekend in Boston. Of course. <laughs> well, thank you again for uh, talking to me today. Uh, I've learned a lot. I had a lot of fun, and thank you to everyone who stopped by to listen. Have a great day. Thank you. Bye.